1997, at the ripe old age of 11, I vividly remember looking up into the night sky and seeing Hale-Bopp Comet. It really left a lasting impression on me, and I've not seen anything like it since. Now, 23 years later, I'm hoping to reignite this magical childhood memory and photograph the latest comet superstar, Comet Neowise. So filled with a mixture of excitement and anticipation, I jumped into my car and made my way to a local dark skies area, which with a bit of luck, would provide incredible photographic potential. So this is the location where I hope to be shooting Comet Neowise a little bit later on. It's called the Point of Air and it's the most northerly tip of the Isle of Man. And it's a personal astrophotography hotspot and favorite of mine for many reasons. Firstly, you've got a clear unobscured view of the northern skies here. You've got little to no light pollution whatsoever. And most importantly, this beautiful little lighthouse that you can see over here in the background is called Winky Lighthouse. And it just sits perfectly alone on this shingle beach here. And it just makes for an absolutely amazing astrophotography foreground subject. And I find myself gravitating back here time and time again. I was here about two weeks ago and I caught quite a nice image of the lighthouse with some noctilucent clouds in the backdrop. It was absolutely spectacular. Weather-wise tonight, um, we've got a lot of the bog standard variety of clouds around, but the weather forecast is giving me some hope that there's gonna be some breaks in this cloud around 11 midnight, one o'clock in the morning, that sort of time. So with a little bit of luck, the cloud will part and we'll get to see the magic up above. Now it's fair to say that I've done an awful lot of research on this comet. I've become a little bit unhealthily obsessed probably. I've been looking at so much information over the last week and looking at so many other pictures that photographers have taken around the world. Just incredible images and it's been thick cloud, 100% cloud coverage here pretty much every single day and I just have not had any opportunity to get out and actually shoot it. And today is the first glimmer of opportunity that I've had so I'm just praying that I get the chance to actually see it and get a few images of it. Now, for my research, two mobile phone apps have been absolutely instrumental, um, Stellarium, and photo pills and I'm not going to go into much detail on those apps. Um, Alan Wallace did a great video recently, I'll link to that in the description where he explained how he used these particular apps to shoot the comet. I'll, uh, I'll put the link to that below, it's well worth um, an actual watch, it's a fantastic, fantastic video. But these, um, these apps have been so, so useful and there's a few variables that you need to understand when you're trying to shoot a comet like this. Firstly, it's the, the, the best time to actually view it. Now, the comet looks at its best when the sky gets to its darkest. So at my latitude here, that window is gonna be from about midnight to probably about three in the morning, approximately. That's when the actual tails of the comet, tails plural, there are two tails. There's an ion tail and um, a dust tail tail that come out and usually they diverge in different directions. Hopefully if I get an image of it I might be able to show you that a bit later on in the video. Um, but yes, you need the sky to get to its maximum darkness in order to see those tails and see the full magnitude and scale of the comet in the night sky. Um, also Stellarium particularly is useful for telling you um, where the actual comet comet is in the sky at any period in time. So there's two sort of variables here. We've got to look at the degree height in the sky. Um, so at its lowest, which is probably going to be about one in the morning approximately, it's going to be around 12 to 13 degrees above the horizon line. So that's a key thing to keep in mind. And then also its position in the sky it's gonna be an azimuth of between 345 degrees and five degrees. Basically the azimuth is the 360 degree uh, measurement 
around the sphere of the night sky where objects are. So it's a really useful tool for charting out the night sky. In layman's terms, that basically means it's gonna be in and around perfect north, maybe just slightly to the west of it um, and very, very low to the horizon generally. And all of this is important because I am gonna try and shoot this comet with the lighthouse that you can see right over my shoulder there. Now in theory, the comet should at its lowest position in the sky when it's 12 to 13 degrees above the horizon line, should sit perfectly above the lighthouse here, which currently I'm kind of sat to the south of the lighthouse and this is looking perfectly north here and there's an empty clear sky behind it well there's a few clouds in it at the moment but hopefully there's going to be a clear sky and from here I've got a perfect shooting angle back to that lighthouse with hopefully the comet shining beautifully just above it I'll pop a link and um, there's a lot of links in the description of this video but I'll pop another link down below how you can find the comet in the night sky and um, time is running out on this it's uh, it's gonna fade quite quickly from here on in over the next week or two and eventually it will disappear altogether so that the time to see this comet is as soon as possible because time is running out so check out the links below in the description to find out how to see it in your area So my research has indicated that this is potentially a great spot to get the image right here but there's a few technical considerations with regards to equipment um, to use for this kind of shot. Now if I go in close to the lighthouse behind me here and try to shoot it wide angle it's going to make the lighthouse look big and impressive but the comet is going to look absolutely piddly and pathetic it's going to look like a tiny tiny smudge in the sky behind it it's just not going to work telephoto is the way to go when shooting this and that's because it increases the size of the comet in respect to the foreground object which is the lighthouse here so I'm going to be using my 70 to 200 f4 lens and I'm standing far back away from the lighthouse I'm probably about 150 meters away from it currently where I am at 200 mils you approximately get a 10 degree field of view when shooting in portrait orientation and that's my plan to shoot portrait because it maximizes the amount of vertical real estate I've got in my shot but you can see that that's a bit of a problem because the comet at its lowest is going to be 12 to 13 degrees above the horizon and it's also said that the actual tail of the comet itself is at least five degrees long itself so 200 mils frankly isn't going to work i'm going to end up either cropping out a bit of the actual lighthouse or the the, the pebble beach or cutting off prematurely the actual tail of the comet above and that's just not going to look appealing at all um, so I'm going to have to shoot wider than that I think probably the optimum sort of range here is 100 to 130 mil I estimate um, I'm on the same level here as the lighthouse ideally if that lighthouse was just elevated a little bit higher than me then I could use those longer focal ranges to really maximize the comet uh, size of my frame but alas you can't have everything Shooting astrophotography with a telephoto lens is quite tricky if you don't have the right equipment and frankly I don't really have the right equipment but I'll try my best with what I've got. Um, obviously the 70 to 200 that I've got is an f4 lens so in an ideal world I'd have an f2.8 but I don't. This is one of those rare circumstances where I actually need that faster glass but I'm just gonna have to make do with what I've got here. Now telephoto astrophotography is difficult 
mainly because of the 500 rule and this is where you take 500 and divide it by your focal length to approximately get an estimate on the right kind of shutter speed that you need to shoot in order to freeze frame the stars in your scene and avoid capturing any sort of micro movements in them as they move across the night sky. So if I shoot at 100 mils then that would equate approximately to a max shutter speed of 5 seconds which is on the short side for astrophotography that gives you a very short window in order to suck in all of that highly valuable light and it's really going to degradate your image quality because you probably need to boost your ISO to compensate for that um, that is the predicament I am in and there's no way to get around it really unless you've got um, a tracking mount on your camera um, on your tripod shall I say which allows you to actually follow the actual movement of the actual stars across the night sky and, and draw out your shutter speed but hey I don't have one of those either so from an image quality point of view if I shoot wider then technically the image quality will improve because I can draw out my shutter speed that little bit longer. So you can see it's very much a delicate balancing act between getting enough focal range to punch into the scene to emphasize the scale of the comet in that composition but also shooting wide enough to protect my image quality. So I'm very much on a tightrope between those two conflicting positions. Settings wise I'm going to be shooting at f4 max aperture to let in as much light as possible, uh, manual focus set to infinity, shutter speed I don't know yet because it's all dependent on the focal range but it's probably going to be something in the region of 3 to 8 seconds it's going to be in that sort of window. ISO is the painful bit, I'm really going to have to crank it up to compensate for those shorter shutter speeds so it's going to be in the multiple, multiple thousands here which is going to be a bit painful but the important thing here is I am going to take uh, consecutive images one after the other so probably around 8 to 10 of them um, and then I'm going to stack them in post-processing and try to average out the noise using programs like Sequitur for example or you can do it in Photoshop. Again I'll pop some links to those down below because I'm not going to explain them in great detail now but they're, they're fantastic for that but essentially it allows you to stack those consecutive images and cancel out the noise because the signal that you're capturing which is the light behind me is um, fixed in its position generally speaking but noise is random within a scene so if you take enough images and average them out you can effectively wipe out and cancel the noise from the scene effectively boosting the signal to noise ratio getting a bit complex now but essentially I'll get a cleaner image I can see the comet, it looks amazing. I can't emphasize how incredible it looks. It is beautiful. When I first started to see it, it was about maybe quarter past 11, around that sort of time. And honestly, it looked quite underwhelming. It just looked like a little smudge in the sky. But as the light levels have decreased, the tail has just grown in size and it's just become so striking and it looks absolutely amazing, <laughs> it really does. So what I'm trying to do composition wise is to position it just off center to the left from the lighthouse, that's my thinking at the moment. But I may try some compositions with it directly above the lighthouse as well. We'll just play it um, how it unfolds here and basically as the comet kind of sweeps down it's not at its lowest yet it's going to be another half an hour to 45 minutes before it gets to its lowest position but as it sweeps across the scene it should come just above the top of my lighthouse here and essentially I, i'm at the moment moving up and down the shoreline here trying to pick out the compositions and i'm trying to get slightly ahead of the comet um, so by the time I've got my camera set up and got the composition sort of dialed in 
I'll be in the right position to get the comet where I need it in the scene. Um, you need to kind of be one step ahead of the comet because it's actually moving surprisingly quickly across its arc. One thing I find useful for astrophotography when you're trying to find your composition in the dark here is to use very short shutter speed. Well, not very short, it still needs to be a second or two, but smash your ISO to the absolute highest level on the camera and it allows you to take quick um, exposures and quickly find your, your level and position your foreground subject in, in your uh, composition without having to wait for long exposures. I mean, there's nothing worse than doing that. Oh my God, the comet actually is getting better. I can see both tails. I can see the iron trail and I can see the dust trail in my images and that tail is massively long. It's so much longer than I anticipated. I'm shooting much wider. I'm currently at 70 mils which is far wider than I anticipated just to get that tail in at the top of the, uh, the frame. It is absolutely beautiful and it's one of the best things I've ever seen in photography or yeah in in my life it's incredible it really really is and i feel absolutely privileged to be here shooting it i just hope i do it justice so i'm gonna have to wrap this up as soon as possible because we're really getting to uh, the crunch time now we're at the darkest period and the comet is going to be at its optimum position above that lighthouse so i cannot mess this up but i'll just quickly show you an image on the back of the camera just dial down the exposure here. That is what we're talking about there. <laughs> I mean, it looks insanely good on the back of the LCD, so I can't wait to see this. What an experience. Needless to say, I'm absolutely delighted with this image. Neowise really surpassed all my expectations with its long dual tails clearly on display. As the comet approached its lowest position in the sky, it literally pointed straight down to the tip of the lighthouse, providing a wonderful synergy between both halves of the image. Given the scarcity of bright comets, its near perfect positioning in the sky and the temperamental nature of Isle of Man weather, I feel this is potentially one of those once in a lifetime images. Just incredible. I feel so very thankful to have had the opportunity to witness it and I hope I've been able to share a little bit of the magic with you all too. But alas, we have come to the end and I need to catch up on some sleep. So thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you all again soon.